All right. We have all our hosts. We have a, a, a number of amazing people here today. Right now on screen, the inscrutable Dan Early, who no longer smiles apparently, and uh, Tom Marticello from a beach near, near where he lives. Our, the amazing Ivan Ants, who is uh, joining us from Argentina, where he is still stuck <laughs> for months now. His colleague, Artie Marin, will join us shortly. So without further ado, I'm going to share the screen. Water is a new gold, helping you thrive in the world's only vital, scarce, and recession-proof market. I've been over this many times. If you don't know water is important, then you're not on this planet. But the truth is, it's never really been monetized. Uh, there's no real way to invest directly in water equipment. We aim to change that. And also, uh, the water industry needs at least 3 million people to replace retirees in the next decade, and we want to help with that too. By the way, water does not recede. It keeps, well, except when it's the tide, of course. Anyway, I'm going to move on to our safe harbor statement, which says that um, whatever we say is not prophecy, but we're doing our very, very best to tell you how it really is. If I mention an offering, it's our Regulation D offering. Well, this is a offering for accredited investors, and it has not been passed by the Securities Exchange Commission. So it's, of course, all stock involves risk, even though we do our best to cushion you from that risk. Guess what? Lou Diamond, who's got a big podcast called Thrive Loud, interviewed me this week, the day before his 500th episode. And um, he was really interesting and I'll be sharing that when I get it. He was, he, <laughs> these, some of these guys ask me tough questions. So it's definitely worth uh, getting into. I will let you know when that shows. And on Monday, I get to, to be interviewed by John Dwoskin, who's a business coach. And that should be interesting too. We have a number of additional ones coming. Jeremy Ryan Slate is doing an amazing job getting me gigs and uh, I really appreciate it. All right. Now, we also got published in Thrive Global, which was founded by Ariana Huffington, who also, of course, uh, launched the Huffington Post. And it, they get about two and a half million viewers per month. This was a republished from an original interview in Authority Magazine and uh, basically talks about my tendency to learn on the fly. We don't claim to get it right the first time, but then again, we are really, really good at learning lessons. And I think that's our saving grace. With that, I'm going to now reshare with, hey, Ivan, nice to see you on screen. Nice to see you, my friend. Yeah, I, we, we, listen, I'm about to share some amazing news because the next up is a video, which is from you. Now it doesn't have any audio, but it has some amazing news. Equity and Help, your company, has now made its second year in a row on the Inc. 500. It's 83 nation nationwide, so it's Inc. 100 now. Number one in Clearwater, which is your headquarters and ours now. Number three in Tampa Bay. So, and uh, number three of all real estate companies. So that is some uh, amazing news. And we're proud to be part of the water of the philanthropic investors invest with a purpose family developing water philanthropic investing so thank you for that so with that i'm going to move to the next slide which is in fact here's the 5000 list showing equity and help almost 4000% growth ivan you shock me I so know. that's <laughs> And apparently you have now paid out in the past 12 months, a million dollars in proceeds to your investors. Yes, our real estate philanthropy investors, my friend, that's, that's correct. And we are so proud because the growth of the company is basically because of two things. Number one, a big purpose and mm -hmm. supported by great philanthropy investors. And number two, an amazing team. We actually, I don't build businesses, I build people. And people is the one that build the businesses. So they fall in love with the purpose and the mission of the company and they are the one that have done it. So 1% of this is me, 99% is Artie and his team. Wow. Well, it's, um, in fact, Bob Roos wants to know how long it before Origin Clear is on the list. That's <laughs> <a good> question. <laughs> 
We will talk about uh, that tomorrow in our. We'll be talking uh, about in our in our weekly meeting. We we are um, very actively working with uh, philanthropic investors to uh, roll out the equity and help. Of course, is the real estate angle of that. I'm about to show a little slide from their own slideshow and parallel it with ours to give you an idea. But before I move on, Adrienne Mazzone from the excellent transmedia group PR agency says, great backgrounds, just wanted to pop on and say hi. So thank you, Adrienne. Anybody who chats will get a shout out. So what's this, what's equity, equity and help all about and why are, you, why are they so successful? Well, they've chosen um, a particular place in the marketplace. So they, they uh, pick up uh, foreclosed properties. And by the way, there's some horrendous foreclosures happening right now. And Equity and Help then buy the homes in bulk, place them in land trusts, and then the investor purchases properties. They're deeded over. And now the investor is the sole beneficiary of the trust. This is some very, very smart legal work, which we actually have made arrangements to benefit from the same lawyers. Brilliant uh, advice. Now you guys are the trustees for $15 a month. That's a lot of money, Ivan. Cripes. <laughs> <laughs> now at our expense, this equity and help does minimum basic repairs, begins marketing them. Then they go, and this is the, the real secret sauce is they find people who would never be able to buy otherwise. They're basically going to get in their, their home for less than they pay in rent. And they, they, they covenant, they agree to be handy and to prepare the place and improve it so that even if they end up losing the property, the property keeps being worth more. Of course, the intention is not for them to lose the property. And the investor recovers his investment, doubling net worth, and of course, still on the asset until it's fully um, bought out by the families and double digit returns. Beautiful model. So I, I went ahead and, uh, and did a similar wheel. Let's take a look at that. In our model, we develop a new water treatment system that answers a need, um, such as a brewery needs to expand its capacity, local city won't take all of their dirty beer water, and so they develop their own system. They commission us to do that, and that's our Texas division, usually custom. We determine that there's a distribution market for the design as a product, and we also look as to whether it could be an entrepreneurial product. So it's a, it's a dual path at this point because of course we have distribution channels. Now the custom systems then turns into a standardized product. We achieve a lot of, uh, this is what we're doing right now with the pool preserver. It's becoming more and more efficient, price competitive and so forth. Now, if we've determined that it's a career builder product like the pool preserver, then uh, we start to develop a package and add a, an envelope of services. The end users who have good credit, we just go ahead and line them up with standard leasing because they can afford it and that's the simplest for them. We've learned that you, these people obviously want a really good money factor and so they can have it. People who don't qualify for standard financing get qualified for alternative investment sources. The alternative investors invest in the equipment and services package and this is where we're still in development. So I wanna make it very clear, you cannot invest directly in water equipment through our program right now. And a lot of people get confused about that this is not an investment offer. You can invest in the company that's developing it. Just the same way that when Airbnb was being built, people like Ashton Kutcher invested early on, got 10% of the company for $7 million, not a bad deal. And only later were the chains of micro hotels built by entrepreneurs. Okay, Origin Clear handles all support, placing equipment new, new, with new users in case of default. And finally, investors enjoy double digit returns while fully owning a managed asset. And again, this is all prospective. It is in development and the packages need further legal work, but it's important to understand that. Now, Ken Berenger, I, I wanna share the thoughts that he had about this. He believes the winning company water is the one creating jobs in water. I'll, just, I'll, I'll cover that right in a shortly. His concept of building an army of water professionals, very cool make Origin Clear Water VARs. Back in the um, 80s, I was um, a computer VAR, as they say, building whole systems. And that's how I got into the industry myself. Great idea, but why now? And that's why, because, oh my God, so many people are out of business and out of jobs. It's an invisible trend because a lot of these people don't declare bankruptcy, they just close. 
And so this is a trend that's been picked up. I think it's really interesting to know the reason they've continued to absolutely explode and thrive in one of the worst economic downturns of the century is they stayed the course. They focused on people that really desperately needed a home rather than the broader market, which dries up much faster. That's the equity and health success story. That is um, the missing piece of um, the story for lots of us, which is everything changed, right? Post COVID career building, whatever you think of COVID itself, it's pretty much done. It's happened. It's going to run its course. It's going to get worse. It's going to get better, this, that, the other thing. But we're talking about the economic impact. And the economic impact is going to be worse and worse and worse. People are going to want to have uh, careers and we can provide them in this business. So they want training. We have the commercial data from our pilot program that we did in Phoenix. And if you go to originclear.com slash pool preserver, you'll get that data. We're putting together this integrated program, Water as a Career which is kind of cool. Now, what's, what helps is that actually services has tripled. You know, all of e-commerce has doubled, but tr uh, services, including financial services, have tripled. And so really we are talking about a space that is the fastest growing, interestingly enough, in the e-commerce world. So that's super cool. We were talking to one of our longtime marketers and all of a sudden we were so surprised because our good man, Tom Burton, shared that he was, he's been doing exactly the same thing that we wanted to roll out with Pool Preserver. Uh, build qualified candidates, uh, black, you know, business in a box package, business marketing, training websites, social media presence, et cetera. CRM, which is customer relationship management, potential leads preloaded. This is, my gosh, when we heard about this, we're like, this is the program. So with that, we went ahead and had a little um, session with him to, to discuss it. And the people who were in that session were Tom, myself, uh, my assistant, Devin, and Tom Burton. And so I'm going to play some video from that because I think it's really interesting. Quick question on the pool. Who would be, would you tend to target, like who would be a target candidate for? Well, it's two, obviously two different audiences. Pool cleaners are a good audience. Good thing about a, somebody in the water business is they're already, they already have something going, which is good, right? So do they own the equipment or, I mean, are they actually then financing it, but they actually own it or? They're basically rent, renting it with a buyout option. So over time, they'll be able to buy it out, right? So there's probably two different deals. One is with, with deposits and, and they're credit worthy. They got a business. That's, that's going to be the easy way to go. But if they don't have that, then it's a matter of a more in-depth interview and making them willing to actually go through the courses. And either way, they got to go through the courses and, and apply the tech. What's the financing methodology that you're attempting to use as the primary? Are you look, like using the third-party equipment lease financing here, or are we going to take this back internal again and try to use the internal network of investors here? The answer is yes. In other words, third-party equipment leasing is easy and uh, the manufacturer is good and so forth and everybody gets paid right up front. If that particular lead can do it, great. But if not, then we're looking at you know getting one of the private investors and doing that gig with the uh, rent roll, with the buyout option kind of model. The reason why is when you use the third-party leasing methodology, essentially they do end up owning the equipment technically, mm -hmm. as long oh. as they made all their payments to the end of the duration. Yeah, that's totally fine. Um, and then here's the good part. You can also include the service component in the lease. Typically you can, you can wrap it all around and, and he gets, so he gets, so if he does qualify, great, go for it. Then we are, everybody's happy. If he doesn't, that's when the uh, alternative investment comes in. I think that we're, we're basically going to go a two tier model here. So the, the idea on this, right, is that they, they can basically do a deep clean of, the, of a pool without emptying the pool, correct? That's the key value proposition? That's a value proposition. Okay. It's more, the, the truth of it is like there's, there's like three different things and it's very dependent on the market you're in. So for example, in the Southwest United States where they're having water scarcity, okay. they have problems on two fronts. One is water is expensive sure. and two, they have restrictions on dumping water. Sure. So a service like this allows you to get around both the restriction issues. 
versus when you're on the East Coast, then you have a different issue. You have temperature and weather conditions, which makes pools really skanky. <laughs> and there's lots of funky stuff that gets in them. And so people then prefer to use a, a RO system on it because that allows them to purify and disinfect the water in one step. So I'm clear the proposal you'd want for me is a program that would be available to those top tier people that would help them market this new, the pool preserver for them, build their lead and build their business for that, correct? Yeah, so we want both. I think we want to have the, the program that is part of our product that we're gonna include right, in the lease right, package. Right, the OEM on it, right, correct. right. And then the other would be a program to get those top tier people, get them through a funnel, get them qualified and get them in a queue mm -hmm. so that we can you know, move them into a sales process. Correct. Okay, all right, I can do that. Gentlemen, thank you very much. This is exciting. Uh, I'm glad you came along. Good serendipity. Let's do it. Yeah, it's cool. All right. But you get the general idea that this thing is now, uh, you know, we, we actually, I called it good serendipity because it is, it's pretty amazing. Water commercial news, Tom and Dan are up and they're going to present what's going on. So for starters, Tom, tell us what's going on in McKinney, Texas. Well, McKinney has been busy. The guys are busy. I always know that they're busier because they get a little short with me on the phone. They're like, I'm really busy right now. I got to go. <laughs> and it's, it's actually a good thing. It's just, you know, you get a little bit of pressure because there's a lot going on and we got a lot of phone calls to make. So we've been, we've been keeping our uh, management meeting short, so to speak, in order for everybody to really focus on the work and really focus on the customers. Uh, it's very important right now that we get the products out the door. We have a, a good backlog of work that has to get completed. So there's been a lot of, ordering of equipment, building equipment. The production guys are busy on the floor and they're getting stuff done. Uh, Mark and I have been discussing, trying to uh, add about two more staff members on the production crew because we have enough work to keep the guys very busy right now. We wanna make sure we, we speed up and improve production a little bit. And then we also are looking at, uh, we've been interviewing some engineers to assist with uh, more workload on that. That'll help us close more of the deals in addition to completing the production. So there's some, fundamental business things that we're doing there. As far as actually sales activity, we've been really uh, continuing on our path with obviously the industrial clients and the commercial clients. I like the quality of the mix that's been coming in. We've had, obviously our bread and butter stuff is really getting done uh, properly with you know RO systems and EDI and, and so forth. But we've also been getting a lot of uh, new opportunities with wastewater treatment and drinking water systems as well. And so it's a nice balanced deck of projects and proposals that are coming in and out. The new change too was us completing some of the work for a couple of our, our key projects uh, with some very really high-end target clients. You know, we've been uh, invited to bid on a couple of projects from some, some really prestigious companies that are well-known. So we're trying to get our foot in the door with a couple of those big projects as well. And then, of course, you know, we're, we're really pushing heavily on our standardized products, the things that Dan's doing, which he'll talk about more. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's been good. It's an interesting time with COVID. And somebody had asked me the other day, I was on a, a call, they asked how we were doing. And I just frankly told them, we've been, we've been really fundamentally busy since February and March and April, May and June has just continued to increase. Uh, and it, it's been really great. It's been a blessing. We've, we've maintained all of our employees We've been now growing again. Uh, you know, I think it's a nice testament to the business and our market that we're in a growth spot. So good for us. You know, it's, it's been really cool. Oh yeah, that's excellent. And just to, to wrap up on the McKinney story, we've, you know, we've had an excellent Q1. Uh, the numbers which we're reporting next week on Q2 are also solid. And uh, so Q1, uh, the first half of the year, was uh, definitely a um, move forward from 2019. And then, uh, but I think that Q3 is really starting to get some momentum. I think you would agree with that? Yeah, I mean, our run rate's really strong right now. You know, obviously we gotta perform and we gotta close, the closing is important, uh, but the run rate's really strong. Definitely we're, we're bidding more than we've ever done and we're winning more than we've ever done uh, in recent times. So. It's, it's pretty significant. It's noticeably different. So uh, you've been dealing with a lot of pool preserver uh, leads. Tell us a little bit what's going on there and what the flow is. I am Mr. Pool Preserver. I feel very much like a swim. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Look, no, it's been cool. Like the poop preserve is kind of an interesting product, right? Because it's, it's based on some really fundamentally awesome technology that we do in reverse osmosis because we designed this thing based on our industrial level technologies. So to be able to provide it for pools was like, yeah, we're going to crush this space. No big deal. So what's interesting as you've been doing the marketing, as we've been doing the videos and we put a little bit of attention on it, uh, we had a pretty tremendous response just in a very short amount of time. We've had almost two dozen inbound leads that just kept coming in. I was getting like, you know, two a day and I'm going, no, nah. I, I kept checking them to see if they were repeats of like some old email and they were just totally fresh guys. Like as a matter of fact, I called a guy back today, I came in this morning and I called him in the afternoon and he's telling me he wants multiple units, you know, a very experienced industrial guy has a whole, you know, mechanical and trucking based business. And I'm sitting here going, okay, the, totally worth talking to the gentleman. You know, he, he was great. He understood business very well, very entrepreneurial minded. And he just gets the business model that it makes money. And uh, it's a great extension product line. The gentleman I talked to yesterday, uh, him and his wife, you know, ran a, a really good business as well. They see this as an extension to their existing business. The two people I talked to the day before, Again, so there was like five people just in the last 48 hours I talked to who were all legit hard working guys and women who are just looking to find a way to make money and, and run an entrepreneurial business. And there are kind of people, they're exactly the people we like to talk to all the time and they're motivated and they're, you know, totally into it. So it was, it was really cool. And then the stuff that you show with Tom Burton, you know, it'd be a nice addition because they were asking really good business questions. How do you get a client? How many clients should you get? How do I do some marketing and advertising? I'm like, well, we've got a little business in a box here if we, we partner up with Tom and we can assist not just with a great piece of machinery, but also with the ability to run a business. And so they really like the balanced approach to the biz op opportunity. And I think that's been, uh, it's, a it's a real positive conversation. Po folks are interested. I'd say half are more than capable of just paying just cash and buying the machine. It's not a real issue. Uh, the rest are interested in the financing because financing is pretty cheap right now and why not take advantage of it? So that's about where we're at. So it's been interesting, at least on the sales side. And we've also made progress on the machine side itself, the actual production level of this thing uh, with, you know, with Dan's assistance on looking at the technology we're using and then Mark and the team's ability to, to go source equipment for it to make sure that we try to drive the price down a little bit better. We definitely see the ability to keep making uh, improvements in our, our cost structure to, to make the machine more affordable. Uh, obviously, as we produce more units, it'll, it'll get better for us and for our, our tradesmen. Yes, and I, I think it's important. First of all, it, it's important to recognize that we are not, we're not trying to get leads right now. In fact, uh, Adrienne knows that, that she was like, okay, we can put, put the word out. And I say, yeah, then we'll get 10,000 people and we will be in deep trouble. So we're, we're on purpose not uh, proactively promoting. These are people who are just hearing about it through our own just uh, general marketing that we do. And um, it really indicates that even with that small amount of marketing, you're getting some serious you know, business for these uh, column $100,000 systems. It's, it varies according to the capacity, but that's mm -hmm. not bad numbers. Remembering that McKinney, they do a million dollars a quarter and here we are it looks like you got half a million dollars right there in 48 hours. So it's very powerful stuff. And um, what we're looking at here is to put our, get our act together with Tom Burton and really, you know, package this thing so that when the flow hits, it's not going to be Tom Marchesell dying on the vine. And oh. then we're going to have this bifurcation where qualified buyers go right over to Crest Capital, get their, their good package and they're up and running the way we all, we all know how to do. And then the biz op people get that new era. So very interesting way to go. Yeah. And thank you. And people are informed. You know, it's an interesting topic. They're not, they're not uninformed inquiries. These are informed inquiries about people who understand equipment, equipment rental businesses. They get that part. They understand how to be entrepreneurs and grow businesses. That's been nice. And the other thing they were informed about is actually the market opportunities. They were sharing information that actually you and I had. Uh, but they were getting it from a different source just about the general pool market. And, and we were having really good conversations about, well, are more people swimming? Are more swimming pools being installed? And like the statistics about the industry itself showed growth. 
because the actual pool market was growing and it's growing faster in the more recent years. And even COVID's driving additional growth of mm-hmm. people putting in pools. So it's a really interesting trend in a really weird moment in history, right? It's very interesting to see the, it's in our direction, right? It, it supports the, the goal that we have. Well, the word of the day is serendipity because for those who don't know what the heck I'm saying, basically it's when things coincide in the, the, just the right way to, you know, literally pool preserver, started a couple of years for, ago for, uh, for us as a custom product, but has really come to life in COVID. And now we got ourselves a business and uh, it's kind of happening organically and it's really allowing us to build something interesting. Uh, now let's, uh, let's have Dan tell us what's happening in his world. Uh, you've had some successful recent installations. Tell us about it. We have, I tell you what, I would, I would want to comment on, we'll do a follow on with, um, with Tom. Uh, I did have the opportunity to speak with Mark Stevens down at uh, McKinney today, and uh, the uh, the evolution of the pool preserver project is moving along splendidly. Uh, when we last spoke last week, we talked about the the status of Gen the Gen two version of this unit, and um, uh, Mark uh, indicated to me that he thinks that he is about maybe about thirty days, definitely thirty days away from having. Uh, the next generation technology up and running, and he actually has a um, a couple of test sites already lined up that we're going to go out there and we'll give this thing a, uh, some real world field testing. So I'm really, for me, being a technology guy and being chief engineer with the company, that's got me really, really excited because when we bring this next level technology together with the the business development that we are seeing with Tom, uh, I think we're going to see a lot of really good things happen with that particular product line. So just uh, just wanted to add that little tidbit there as an update to the to the audience. As That's far as installation goes, because um, that basically while you're we're promoting how awesome it is, that that helps me say Riggs. By the way, I spent some money buying some equipment the other day. Oops, had to test some out. But anyway, hey, we got to make this thing That's work. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. We got to make it work. As far as the installations go, uh, Rob Litos, who's our, our technical project manager, he's um, he and I work uh, hand in hand on a daily basis, heading up the modular water systems product line. He was uh, this week. He was up um, in New York, uh, working on just some last minute punch list items on our most recent installation, and that was a multi uh, multi pump station project for a locality, a little small hamlet in New York. He sent me uh, some photos, some site photos, in which that uh, on the screen in front of us, you'll see the photo to your right. While it may look rather boring to the viewer, that actually is a completed installation that utilizes one of our Everamod pump stations. And uh, when he sent me the uh, the photographs of this thing, his, uh, his text message was, holy cow, I cannot believe what this thing looks like. And when I opened it up on my phone and looked at it, I was like, Holy cow, I can't believe it either. And this is a piece, this is a boring conventional piece of civil infrastructure. But what is important about this is, is that this particular installation is another one of our Everamod pump station product lines or uh, products where we're taking advantage of our heavy plastic manufacturing and our long life cycle durability capability. And this is, uh, I was just so, so pleased with it. The contractor, when I spoke with him today, uh, just in a follow up, um, he was very, very pleased with the overall installation. And so this is just more proof positive of, of the trend that we're seeing and the uh, the increased level of adoption of this technology by the specifying engineers and more importantly, the end users that are out there in the marketplace. Just this past week, just in a, in a parallel to the story about this particular installation, just this past week, we have had probably another at least 10 new pump station opportunities come into us. Whoa, this is that $1.5 million you were talking about? Uh, it, in all, if you combine them all together, probably plus or minus, you're probably in that price range. And, that, and again, it's a total package. It's a total solution, total package uh, delivery model that we offer uh, with the heavy plastic manufacturing being a key component to it. So the this has been a, again, this week with regards to just our plain Jane pump station product line, just I've been totally, totally, just jazzed about the progress that we're seeing and the uptick in inquiries, real world high probability inquiries that are coming in. It just, it's very reaffirming to know that the world and the civil infrastructure world, the, engin- the engineers that 
that work with this technology that they know that this is where the world is heading for this type of application. So that's one thing. The other thing I'll share with you is, is we have just really started focusing on our package wastewater treatment um, capabilities, again, with the modular water system product line. And that is starting to really gain some traction too. I, I've been, I had a number of different phone calls this week with prospective clients. And I would dare say that we're probably by the end of the year, probably want to add, mm, I would say at least three to four more major purchase orders to the current pipeline. I mean, closed deals, contract underway, moving forward. And so these are six figure, figure, these are all six figure packages, seven figure sometimes. Yes, uh, the pump station, all of the pump stations average right at six figures. All, all of the wastewater treatment systems that we're doing, they are low six to mid six figure equipment offerings. Excellent. Dan, we're running short on, on time, but on the left there is a beautiful little package. I want to just showcase the fine engineering being done in Texas. Yes, I am very, just, just totally, totally uh, proud to be associated with the progressive water treatment and Mark and his team down there, McKinney, the, their fabrication capabilities, the in-house skill sets that those guys have, it is second to none. It's, I mean, they produce high quality equipment. Love it. Dan, thank you. I couldn't tell you, I can't tell you how excited I am about how things are going. And it, it looks like you're just going to keep growing your darn beard. And that's just how it is, right? I think it's directly, I think there's a direct correlation. So true. So true. I'm going to um, quickly wrap up because we, we don't like to keep people too long. I love how people have stuck around. So, you know, we've talked about a lot of wonderful things about how we're, we're, we want to bring jobs to America and hopefully eventually the rest of the world. This is going to be a big job scaling it up. And so now the game is to capitalize those efforts. We are a public company. And the question is how you can participate in that. But how you can participate is very simple. Origin clear. I don't, I'm in a stock market. I'm not going to tell you how long I'll be in a stock market. I can tell you this. I'm holding on to my origin clear stock. It's uh, sitting right there. You'll see it disclosed in the forthcoming quarterly filing as I've been accumulating stock through our, our restricted stock plan, I'm leaving it with the transfer agent because that's the way it should be. I do think we have a great future, but we're not asking people to purchase common stock who are accredited investors. We put you into a bond that pays excellent dividends. Uh, show me anybody who gives you 12% and you're probably talking about the local bookie. Uh, <laughs> it's a lot these days. And your principal gets redeemed for double its value priced at the price at the time of conversion. So even if other people sell, price goes down, whatever, it doesn't matter. The importance of all public companies is how much it trades. And I think we're starting to trade very healthy numbers every week and every month. And you get a, a free stock grant of, of a quarter of your investment. Again, you get to redeem that or convert it at the price of the time of conversion. So you're in a, um, a safe bubble, so, so to speak, until you're ready to convert. And you are, uh, in the meantime, getting the dividends both on the cash and stock side. And Paul Fetcher, I would like to know, have we reached out to the Biden team to tell how we can help them achieve their goals? Well, you know, it's very true that there's a lot of uh, big push for what's called the big reset um, for a greener planet if, as things ramp up again. And uh, we think that we're gonna do a great job with getting blue, we're blue, but, it, but blue is a big part of green. And um, we're staying out of the political, uh, Paul, just to let you know, we're not, we're not gonna get involved in the political game this, this, uh, this uh, season. But what we are doing is preparing our systems, getting ready. Overall, uh, we think this is the best way to invest in a small company that's public because you've got that yield product and the ability if we really do our job, which we totally believe we will, especially with the support of philanthropic investors, we think we're going to take off and be on the Inc. 500, just like them. With that in mind, the stock might take off and then you would want to convert. Now, Byron wants to know if the bond is offered to all investors. It is offered to accredited investors. Now, we have filed an offering for unaccredited investors, which is a bond that pays a pure 10% cash, no conversion to stock. But when we redeem that bond, we have to pay you back 150%. Minimum is $500. So we're gonna make it possible for everyone to get an origin clear bond, but accredited investors, of course, get 
rewarded in proportion to, of course, the size of their investment. I wanted to uh, say that, you know, uh, Ken was just saying equity and help has demonstrated the much, much bigger market are those who can't readily afford these types of equipments. It's also the fastest growth factor for us. Investor funded portion of the market will be far more recession resistant part of the market. Something else equity and help has demonstrated is that focusing on those who can't just snap their fingers and buy is a much, much bigger market, much richer. And it's the market that ultimately does more good for all parties. So that's a beautiful statement. Thank you, Ken. Um, I'm, I'm going to wrap it up. I thank you all for your time. It's been an excellent uh, show. I love how everyone's stuck around. How much does accredited investors start with? Blue Rose. Accredited investors make $200,000 a year personally or $300,000 filing jointly, or they have a net worth of $1 million, not including their primary home. So that is not everyone for sure. But this is why you will soon see, I would say within 30, 45 days, an, our offering for unaccredited investors will come back up. Uh, Artie, did you, you've been very pa uh, patient and quiet. Did you have any last words? Yeah, I was just thinking about <clears throat> what you're doing and what we've been doing uh, over the years to build our company. And, uh, you know, there's kind of a, a, an entrepreneurial goal in the sense of being able to make money while also, you know, not to be tried, but making a difference. And I think it's the real drive. You know, people ask Ivan all along or all the time, uh, how did you get these 1,000%, 2,000% growth? And the answer is always the same. When you're, when you're pursuing help uh, and you're doing it for the right reasons, it, it tends to come back to you. And I, I realize that sounds oversimplified, but in our philanthropic investor program, we actually lay it out step by step, ethics and integrity and all that neat stuff with the idea that it is coming back. So part of it's, I guess, a belief. That's beautiful. Thank you very much. It's Ivan, uh, any last why, words before we wrap up? We're also doing our work with you. Thank you, sir. Ivan, any la a couple last words? Yes, my friend, uh, I am really proud of how Origin Clear has, has taken now the philanthropy investor brand and, and, and knowledge and start expanding because it's uh, really very powerful when you actually put now in the organization the possibility of not only allowing your future investors to invest with the purpose and deliver to them clear investment, clear results, to actually create the Airbnb for water. And this power coming together, it's actually what's going to take us to the whole new level of the world because I hate 6,000 children dying every day for water problems issues. Thank you, thank you. And, and I am so proud of you, Riggs and, and the team. I appreciate it, thank you, sir. And I have a quick chat from, uh, from Mansa uh, asked, is the value proposition that the treated water is then able to be placed into the municipal water streams? or is the idea to treat the water for reuse by the same facility using the device? And the, it's an excellent question, and the answer is both. In other words, if you have to treat your own water, then you're gonna recycle it before you send it to the city. The city these days is demanding we treated water. Well, you can do a couple turns of the water yourself, save a lot of money, and that's what we call a virtuous cycle. So thank you, Mansa, for a great question. Thank you all for your patience. You've stuck around to the end. You are a wonderful audience. I'll see you again next week next Thursday, and um, do sign up at oc.gold slash CEO. Good night, all. Have a great weekend. And again, to Equity and Health and Philanthropic Investors, biggest congratulations on your amazing achievement. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. Yeah. Good night. <laughs>